joined by our future guest, Jeff Hull, Senior Financial Advisor at Manulife. Great to see you. Good to see you again. It is interesting, uh, National Bank pointing out that the Air Canada numbers are well ahead of the pre-pandemic quarter. Yeah, it actually shows the revenge traveling. It sure is uh, in full bloom, absolutely. And, and actually, Air Canada's also recovered well, too, because uh, they were able to do a lot of contracts during COVID to get fuel dirt cheap mm. for aviation fuel. And that those contracts have mainly run out. So they're paying full freight. Yet despite all the revenge traveling, they're still able to kind of move forward, which is uh, a tough industry, as you know, that airline industry. And they've done a good job. Let's have a look at the stock, because the shares have dropped this year. People are worried that with a softer economy and... Economists are calling for near zero growth economically for Canada through the spring. Investors are worried um, Air Canada can't keep it up. Yeah, that's true. And there's a lot of competition. You always have discount airlines and routes being changed. Uh, so there's a lot on their plate to have to juggle. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the airline industry. There's too many factors you can't predict mm -hmm. or see the future, or literally, no pun intended, look down the runway to see the debris that's coming. So they do have a tough road to hoe. But you know what? They've done a pretty good job overall. But, uh, but again, global competition, and they've really got to tighten their belt straps and make it work. It's not a stock that you, you so you're not a trader in the sense that you don't have some tr stocks that you trade looking for cyclical downturns and then. No, recoveries. what I mainly focus on is companies that I wish I was wealthy enough with my clients to own the whole company to ourselves, whether it's an <laughs> Apple or NVIDIA or whatever. Uh, Air Canada is one that it's a good company, but the problem is just too many factors I can't predict, and that makes me very uncomfortable. For instance, I don't know what the cost of jet fuel will be a week from now, a month from now, let alone a year from now, mm -hmm. uh, even with the war going on. If, if, uh, if Iran joins the fray and so does the U.S., that's going to cause the price of oil and fuels to, to skyrocket potentially. It could really damage a business that doesn't have a lot of margin in it, but they've done a good job. This, this last quarter learnings is a good result of them actually mm -hmm. tightening, tightening their belt and trying to make everything work, but against an industry that I don't have a lot of faith in because I can't see through the fog uh, often enough to feel comfortable. Is there anything that you're doing differently in your investing strategy these days from what you did prior to COVID? It was, is there any important lesson that was learned there or are we more or less returning to business as normal? For myself, it's business as normal and has been right through COVID, uh, especially because I do a lot of U.S. tech and that that did even better during COVID. But I think mm -hmm. the big lesson for everybody is, is you got to have a plan and be prepared to pivot in a moment's notice. Right. Nobody saw COVID coming. You know, all of the human race sheltered in place, you know, worse than mm -hmm. World War II. And it's important that businesses, but also investors have that ability with their advisors to pivot in a moment's notice to get into the right lanes. They're going to benefit from whatever situation is out there and not fall victim. But the worst thing people can do is just sit and do nothing and let a train hit them. Yeah. If there's a train coming, get off the track. You can always go back on the track later, but that's important for investors to know is you've got that flexibility. We're going to have lots more from 